good. You know, one thing, Chris, I want to say is um, we've we've got a fan. We've got a, a, a fan of both our work um, who um, was uh, who's now um, uh, well into uh, the, uh, the the final chapters of the, the human life cycle as we know it in terms of ages, you know, birth to you know, maybe maybe 100 if, if we get if we're so lucky. Um, but uh, she talked about how she just loves uh, not only reading your books, but listening to your books. And one of the things with the romance genre, and, and maybe we can talk a little bit about this too. Um, but one of the things with the romance genre um, that uh, seems to be an ongoing theme is the importance of people coming back to a sense of connection and completion as a, as a team. Um, well, yeah. in, rom in romance, happily ever after is a requirement. It is an absolute requirement. You finish that book and it has a happily ever after or a happily for now. You know, mm -hmm. so, so mm -hmm. you have a conclusion, you have an overall arc and a conclusion in your book, unless it's a cliffhanger, then you have it in book two or three, but <laughs> romance requires a happily ever after or a happy for now. Um, if you don't have that, if you have a sad story, or if you have, you know, somebody that, you know, them splitting up like, like a love story for a man, it, it is called a love story. It is not called a romance. Oh, wow. I didn't so know that. when you write romance, you do have to have that specific ending. It is a requirement or you're not writing romance. You're writing women's literature or you're writing love stories. Mm -hmm. um, Nicholas Sparks, um, you know, some of his, I, I would call a love story rather than a romance. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, there's, there's, there's different ways to view everything, but for romance, I mean, every romance writer will tell you the genre requires an HEA or an HFN. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, and, and romance gets a lot of, um, you know, people call it, uh, you know, housewife uh, porn. It is hmm. not, uh, you know, and, and, and what, what really, really bothers me about that is you can watch a television show with far more graphic stuff than what I put in my book. And it, it and, <laughs> And it, it's okay, but you would label it romance and it becomes something that you can sweep under the carpet and it's not equal to anybody else's work. And uh, the romance writers in the world are really, really trying hard to change that perception of romance. Mm. So, you know, I'm sorry, that was a moment of soapbox. No, I, I mean, but this is, this is important <laughs> stuff because, um, you know, one of the things in terms of uh, people being cynical about romance, um, you know, I come from a, a background of, um, uh, you know, with my theater background, we're always about sort of the dark side of things, ambiguity, mm -hmm. unresolved difficulties, um, existentialism, you know, this is stuff that I was, you know, schooled on um, in theater. And, um, but with this uh, particular person, um, I believe she said that uh, before she uh, lost her late husband, mm -hmm. um, they'd been married for over 50 years. Yes, they were. Um, and to me, it was like, Oh, yeah. This really does. This really does. Uh, th this really does work. Um, you know, and as a single man, I'm still, you know, uh, figuring out. Okay, well, you know, how how does it work for me, and, and all that sort of thing. But the idea that there really is a before and an after um, in terms of pre collaboration um, in life and decision to collaborate. Um, and how there really is an arc to that. And um, ultimately, if one is in a state of, here I am on my, my, my soapbox now. Um, ultimately, if one is in a state of collaboration, one is in a state of greater fulfillment um, uh, is, is the idea.